and welcome to Chuck's Diecast Car and Model Reviews. Today we're taking a look at the Maisto Ferrari LaFerrari in 118 scale. Uh, a pretty good model uh, for the low price that I paid for it. Uh, it is, uh, uh, you know, has some pretty good features in it and uh, a fairly decent amount of detail. Um, let's uh, go ahead and first of all though talk about the LaFerrari itself. Although probably most of you who are watching this know most most of the specs of this car. First of all, uh, this was part of the you know what Ferrari collectors consider the holy grail of Ferrari supercars, which includes the Ferrari 288 GTO, the uh, uh, Ferrari F40, the F50, the Ferrari Enzo, and then. Um, the uh, La Ferrari. All of them were known for being limited edition, very expensive, very high performance, and just very cool cars. So, uh, but uh, by limited edition, uh, they only made 499 of these. Uh, now, the other ones they made in editions of, you know, somewhere between, you know, 250 and about 1,400 of them. So this one is a little bit in the middle range of, you know, production amount. However, the uh, fact that it they made 500 of them doesn't make them any bargain on the uh, used car market, believe me. Uh, a few years ago I was at the RM auctions in Monterey and I actually got to clamber inside a Ferrari uh, F, you know, an, a La Ferrari like this and actually I fit in it very well and I was very comfortable. However, I would not have been comfortable paying the three and a half million dollars it sold for, be, particularly since when they were new they sold in somewhere around the million dollar range. Um, but, uh, you know, it, in terms of performance, in terms of exclusivity, and in terms of coolness, you know, I guess you could say it's worth it. Uh, but uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the model itself here, okay? I've noticed, uh, first of all, that there, I've, there are a couple of different versions of the uh, LaFerrari that you can get by Maisto. Uh, one of them has silver wheels and has a uh, uh, black roof. Mine has, you know, the red and the black wheels, and I kind of prefer it this way. Uh, and uh, if you were to buy the Hot Wheels version, interestingly, the basic version does not have an opening engine bay, even though it costs more than the Maisto, and the Maisto does have an opening engine bay. However, the Elite version of the Hot Wheels, which I see on eBay selling in the $150 range, does have an opening engine bay. Uh, but uh, taking a look at the model itself here, let's go ahead and get a little bit of a close-up here. I mean, uh, I guess the, you know, the difference in the, between the Hot Wheels and the Maisto may be the paint job, because as you can see here, it's pretty wavy paint job. Uh, you know, this is a, a four-footer. You know, it looks good from four feet away or something like that. You know, like like the paint job on my Alfa Romeo. Um, the uh, wheels here look pretty decent. Um, you can see that the uh, rotors do turn with the wheels. And uh, the calipers also do not turn with the rotors and you can see that the uh, calipers do have the Ferrari badging on them and I believe in some of the other models they have yellow calipers but I'm not sure um, you, you can see here as well that the you know the panel gaps are pretty decent uh, but uh, you know because it does have opening parts they are a little bit wider than you know they should be looking at the front of course the front grille is just textured plastic and not open mesh uh, owing to its price point headlights there as you can see look 
pretty decent and the Ferrari badge is just a decal but looks all right there too um, and uh, notice the little center bar and then the uh, you know the lower red section here which is reminiscent of the for, uh, Formula One cars of the era which had a high nose and had a little bar going down to the front wing so that's kind of a nod to that I assume and uh, also there is an opening front trunk here although it's not really a trunk because the uh, front intake leads to the radiator which leads to these fans which come out these extractor vents on the uh, trunk lid and you can see that there is uh, nothing else there for storage um, the uh, interior does have carbon fiber texture which is nice but all you have really here are these fans and I do like uh, this front aspect where you can see the uh, single windshield wiper which you can do on a car like this because the windshield is about as long as it is wide and uh, you know really highly raked and I like these uh, very cool you know rearview mirrors on stocks there too okay uh, taking a look at the uh, rear here of course uh, you know it does like every other supercar made uh, nowadays have you know these um, rear extractor vents and tunnels for uh, downforce coming from underneath the car and uh, you can see that the rear mesh here is textured plastic as well the uh, tail lights are okay not fantastic the rear exhausts are not as detailed as they are in the real car and you have the uh, uh, reverse light there as well um, I do like of course the fact that you can see the engine unlike modern supercars that are available such as the 918 and you know which was sort of a contemporary of this car and also the McLaren P1 they don't have opening engine bays but of course this one does let's uh, zoom in on this very lovely 6.3 liter V12 engine uh, which produced 780 horsepower augmented by electric motors with a uh, about 160 horsepower so this is the first hybrid Ferrari hypercar so uh, so you know this is uh, an electric motor designed to make the car faster and not ec more economical because all it does is provide that extra grunt you know coming out of corners or coming off the line you know with the extra torque and horsepower because I think this electric motors battery range is only like 10 or 15 miles something like that so it's not like you're gonna go into full electric mode unless you're going down to the corner grocery store or something uh, but detail on the motor is pretty nice um, you'll see these two things here which are actually struts which hold up the engine but they're not necessary uh, detail in the engine is nice the uh, the intakes and valve covers look really good with the Ferrari badging and the carbon texture you can see the carbon texture on the intake trumpets here as well as uh, covering up the ancillaries so you know it looks pretty good in here okay so let's go ahead and take a look at the interior of the car and of course it does have the cool opening doors here uh, I've actually sat like I said in uh, uh, a La Ferrari and the doors actually weren't in the way or anything when you were clambering inside so it is actually fairly comfortable to get inside uh, but uh, looking at the inside here you can see that the detail is pretty decent 
You know, it's got that sort of hexagonal or octagonal uh, steering wheel with the uh, uh, center airbag and, uh, of course, the Ferrari logo there. Around the uh, airbag is the semblance of the buttons for the uh, what they call the Manitino controls on the steering wheel. Um, the dash, uh, let's see if we can bring that into focus here, is, uh, is, you can't really see it very well because the paddle shifter there behind the steering wheel kind of gets in the way, but it's okay. Um, the uh, center console, you can see the carbon fiber texture and all that sort of business in there. And, uh, well, let's go ahead and bring up the seats here. That is, if it will focus. Um, the bucket seats look all right with that red coloration. Seat belts are plastic and uh, don't look particularly great, but they are there. And, you know, everything in, he is in here is, you know, what you expect to see inside you know, relatively low priced, but uh, well made uh, Maystone model. Okay, uh, but um, you know, that is pretty much it for today. If you uh, like this uh, video, you know, please go ahead and like, and if you want to watch more videos, please go ahead and subscribe. Have yourself a great day.